Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2017 in our European Journeyman series at Brighton. Now last episode we kicked off our time at Brighton with four straight victories after losing our first match at home against Fulham. We now need to pick up the baton and carry on running in the championship. We've got four big games starting at home or away against Oxford who are 20th in the league. Then it's Ipswich Town, then it's West Brom, then it's Hull. They're going to be some big matches and this will really start to set up the championship table by the end of this episode. At the moment we're in third place and we can move higher with a win today. Um, I want to get into those automatic promotion places and then stay there for the rest of the season. Really I think we should be winning the title given the depth of our pockets. Um, but I think I'm probably going to stick with the team that we've got because I was going to bring in one more centre-back but the player that I wanted got himself injured so I can't sign him now um, but I might look to do so in January but I think uh, given there's only about three footballing months until uh, we get to the January transfer window we can stick with a team that's just won four straight matches and then identify players that we might want to bring in looking for an eye to the Premier League um, in January so plenty of time to get through all of that at the moment we need to focus on building up our league position and against Brighton we're going to put out the strongest team that we can uh, it's made up of Frias, Mbom and Bueno up front with Bakaria and Morris in midfield then it's Hickman, Soler, Andres, Lambeze, Carlos Eduardo and in goal Haug well, it's been a pretty terrible first half. I mean, we've been in complete control of it, but we've not been able to break through against Oxford. Six efforts, but only one on target with 62% possession. It's not exactly what I would want in a game like this, and we need to make sure we do get the three points today, otherwise it's really going to be a missed opportunity. Well, with 20 minutes to go, we do finally have the first highlight of the game. It's not been the world's best match, just two efforts on target, one each which isn't a good reflection on us given we've had nine efforts on goal. Um, but we really need to push and get that breakthrough. Lambeze, sensible lung. Maybe that's why we're not creating chances if that's what we're doing with possession. Fatai on the ball, trying to cut inside, finds Tyra. Now Fatai again, coming down the right-hand side. Karidi to Tyra and four finds Fatai, puts it across and straight into the arms of Haug. A lucky escape for us there. Less than 10 minutes to go, we have a free kick. Pospisil through to Hickman. He's gone for goal and it's gone in. Mifsud with a howler there. I think he got a hand to it, but it's our left back who's got the goal out of absolutely nothing. We finally make the breakthrough. A huge stroke of luck for us, but that could be absolutely defining come the end of the season. If we get anything by more than a point or two, then it is thanks to that bit of luck there and an excellent effort from Hickman. Here's Mbom over to Frias, looking to clean up the game. Hickman back across to Fernandez. Now Pospisil, ball cleared away. Need to be careful about those long balls, but the keeper should get to that. Just a few seconds left, and this will make it our fifth straight victory in all competitions, our fourth straight victory in the championship. Exactly what we needed. And there is the full-time whistle, a good victory in the end, although not maybe as impressive as it should have been. But all that really matters is that we've managed to get three points and it leaves us sitting in fourth place in the league. Um, but we are now three points clear of fifth place and the playoff positions. Still a bit of a way to go to get into those um, automatic promotion places, but I think a couple more wins will definitely do that. Well, we now have a match away from home against Ipswich, but annoyingly we have a few players travelling for international duty, which is really frustrating because it's limited the number of substitutes I can put out to just four. Uh, fortunately, we have kept most of the players, but heading into this international break, we've been hampered early on for reasons out of our control. Um, hopefully we'll still be able to get the result, though. We've still got most of our first team going out there. We've got three Bueno and Mbom all available up front, with Bakari and Morris also still available in midfield. The match winner Hickman is in at left wing back, with Getson Fernandez coming in at right wing back. Then it's Soler, Andres, and then Lambezi across the defence, with Haag in goal. Andres with the free kick, finds Morris, now in bomb through to Bueno, Frias round the corner for Hickman, in on goal again, he's hit the post and it's cleared away, good thing that defender was where he was, otherwise one of our players would have just touched that home, but we are in control in the opening 10 minutes, we just need to make it count and Frias's volley nearly did that, but instead has gone over the bar. 
tickle with the free kick. Header has been won by Soler, but Kappel's got to it. Fernandez with a big challenge. Slips it down the line and Mbom is onto it. He's got players making a run. Bueno is one of them. He's our top scorer. He's in on goal. He pulls it back. Mbom does get to it. Now Hickman over to Bakaria who strikes it. And it's hit the woodwork. So close to our lead. Corner from Mbom trying to pile the pressure on here. And Lambazes hit the woodwork. But Soler is there for the rebound. He's given us the lead. And I think he looked... Pretty much every single match we've played with Brighton, we've taken the lead. But that's a crucial one as it does temporarily take us top of the table. Nearly half-time, Frias on the attack. We can smell blood right now. He slips it into Mbom. He's got players across, but he's gone for goal. He had four players waiting across the box if he'd just put it in front of the face of goal. Bueno, over to Morris. He's got two players trying to make runs there. Bakaria finds Frias. Bueno slips it into Embalm. It's saved again. Embalm and again it's saved. A brilliant double save from the keeper there. Embalm to take the resulting corner. Looking at the near post but headed away by the defender. And actually De Silva Lopez has got onto that. And he's coming on the counter attack. It's a very good one as well. Printecha Hickman goes in with a couple of challenges and wins the ball. Um, although Patterson has the throw for Brighton. Uh, for Ipswich. It's a long throw as well, but it doesn't result in anything. Just over 20 minutes left. Ashby with the ball tries to put it forward, but well cut out by Andres. Been very impressed by him since we brought him in. Now Hickman. A couple of players ahead of him. He's given the ball away there to Ashby really terribly. Um, Patterson over to Dekel. Now Capel to Hutchinson. Out wide to Fernandez, P. Fernandez, up against our Fernandez, who does win that challenge. Morris to Mbom. He's got Fernandez with him. He's kept the ball somehow. He finds Bueno. Now Frias into Mbom, onto Bueno, in on goal, and he finishes it brilliantly for 2 0. And that should be the result pretty much secure. This is another very good win for us and another clean sheet as well. We didn't hold on for quite some time, but the last two games we've shut out the opposition and got six points on the board. A very good performance, which I think might have taken us top of the league. And there you are. Swansea can still go ahead of us if they win their game in hand, but we are currently sitting top of the table after six matches. We are the other side of both the transfer window and the international break. Nobody has come in or gone out since the last game, but there was a bit of deadline day drama. Um, at about 9 o'clock the, in the morning of the transfer deadline day, West Ham came in with about a £15 million bid for Albert Bueno, which I rejected. They then upped it for around £20 million with lots of add-ons spread out over 48 months. I rejected that as well. And then at about 9 p.m., they put in a £20.5 million bid, cash up front, which I didn't know was his release clause. Um, and he was nearly gone. But fortunately, I have my director of football set up to manage contracts. Um, and he instantly negotiated a new contract for Albert Bueno, uh, which managed to keep him in and increased the level of his release clause to about £30 million. Because he is our best player by far and he's been brilliant since the start of this season. He's just 22 years old and he has a lot of room to grow. Um, so that was a huge bit of drama. We would have been absolutely messed around had he left us for West Ham, who are also just in the championship, if I remember right, uh, and not even doing as well as us. Uh, but they've spent a huge amount of money and also had a lot of players leave um, and are in a bit of an overturn. So they were looking to steal one of our best players. But we've managed to hang on to him and hopefully he will shine today um, against West Brom. This is going to be a big match for us against a tough team. But with Bueno up front alongside Mbom and Frias, we've got every chance of getting some goals. Uh, Bakaria and Gennaro are the two in midfield with Hickman, Soler, Andres, Lambaze and Carlos Eduardo, the defenders. And Amigo is back from injury and back in goal. Baloch with the ball, tackled by Bakaria. Hickman finds Frias, ball over the top for Mbom. I think he's got Bueno with him. He doesn't need him. He's hit the post. I thought that was going to go in, but he just couldn't quite force the angle. And we've been hitting the woodwork a lot lately. Hickman with the throw, an hour gone in the game. Bakaria to Soler, put across to Eduardo, headed out towards Gennaro. 
Bakaria to Hickman again. Frias pulls it back. Embom. Ball comes to Frias once more. And Embom this time does find the back of the net. Third time lucky for him after hitting the woodwork earlier and failing with that effort. He did get it in at the second time uh, to make it 1-0 and give us that lead that we always get in every match. Bueno with the corner and looking for Bakaria headed out. Hickman gets to it. The West Brom players are very, very tired now after the international break. Lowering down at about 60% fitness. We're in about 10% better shape. Bueno through to Embom. Comes to Frias. Good first touch and he slots it under the keeper for 2-0. And this could get worse for West Brom. Andres wins the ball. Finds Bakaria. He finds Embom. Slipped into Cooperdon. And he's put it wide. Chow. Puts the ball into Tulio, crossed in, Andres heads it away, now Embom can counter-attack, he's got players running up in support, he's lost the ball, it's come to Andres again though, now Soler, on to Marin, back to Soler once more, can we make it 3-0 here, Marin over the top for Embom, he's got a runner, it's come to Pospisil and he's hit the woodwork, I mean the number of goals we would have scored if those goals were just a tiny bit wider. Amago has the ball in a game that we've absolutely dominated. He sends it forward. The referee blows the full-time whistle. And it's another victory for us in the championship. And we are really, really starting to turn on the style in these games and shut out our opponents. And we are now clean, home and dry at the top of the league. Two, one point clear of Norwich, um, but would be two points clear of Swansea. So nobody can catch us at this point, And it's in our own hands. We may have lost our first ever match in charge of Brighton, but since then we've put together seven straight victories in all competition and we can make it a second perfect episode in a row if we beat Hull away from home today. The team is fully fit despite it being a midweek fixture and I'm absolutely in love with this squad at the moment. I'm really, really happy with what we've pulled together and the majority of them we have signed ourselves, which is a sign of how good the transfer business was this summer given we cleared a £30 million profit and still managed to hang on to players like Bueno up front. Um, so for this game, the team we're putting out there is pretty much our strongest 11. We're pretty used to it right now. Um, and in fact, I don't think there's any changes to this team that I would make if I need, if I wanted to. Um, our favoured front three are Frias, Bueno and Embom. Bakaria and Morris are the established centre midfield partnership now. Uh, and Marion, Lambeze, Andres, Soler and Carlos Eduardo are our first choice back five with Amago in goal. And this will be an interesting view at how our strongest team can do when they're at full fitness. Embom. Pulls it back to Bakaria over the top for Embom. He's in behind. He's got two players to his left if he needs them, but he went for goal and Rudge able to save it comfortably. Bueno with the corner towards the back stick. Drops down to Marin. Bakaria in there. Marin again finds the bottom corner. It's not the first time he's scored a match winning goal. Hopefully this will be another, but we are in control just nine minutes in. Bueno's free kick. He finds Frias. Ball back to Bakaria, finds Marin in a good position, he skips one tackle and he fires it into the bottom corner and the left wing back gets his second goal of the game to make it 2-0. And Bomb with the free kick, looking in the middle, there's a foul in there from a younger and we've got a penalty. Well, Marin is stepping up for a hat-trick, and he has got the hat-trick. The left wing-back gets a first-half hat-trick away from home against a former Premier League team. What a player. Bueno through to Embom, trying to push it outside. The ball comes back to Morris. Now Bueno again slips it into free ass. He's in on goal. It's saved, and it's cleared away. Mateus with a free kick. He sends it back to the defender. Maybe a sign of their mentality at the moment. Garcia to Haji, over to Arnaud, we are again, pretty lethargic passing here from Hull, Acosta tackled by Morris but they keep the ball, a younger, over to Acosta, two in the middle to aim for, he does put the cross in, it's come to Tazi, it is blocked, so it's put across again, Eduardo with a big tackle but it fell to Arnaud and he was able to drill it into the bottom corner to get a goal back for Hull. Corner from Bueno, sent towards the back stick. It's come to Andres and it's cleared by a defender, but that could have been another goal. Well, we're nearly at the end of a game that has seen 14 yellow cards evenly split across both teams. 
And yet, amazingly, we didn't have a single red card, which I am blown away by. Both teams substituting off three players who had yellow cards. But there's the full-time whistle. 22 players leaving the pitch and a good 3-1 win for us, which means that we do now have two perfect episodes back-to-back -back and a one-point lead at the top of the table. Brilliant stuff. And we are starting to look like a Premier League team in waiting with four points clear of Fulham, who actually beat us in our first game of this season. Um, and we're looking quite nice at the moment. I'm very encouraged about our ability to kick on from here. Because remember, we've still got about 20-odd million quid that we can spend in January if we need to. So hopefully we'll be able to bring in a couple of Premier League level players in and just see out the rest of the campaign. We've also got a big match against Chelsea away from home in the EFL Cup. The first time we'll play one of the big teams in England um, but overall a very very good start to life in the championship and a lot to look forward to going forward if you've enjoyed this episode do drop a like on the video for the two perfect episodes in a row make sure to follow me on Twitter if you don't already links in the description and subscribe to the channel if you're new but until next time see ya